Hi guys, welcome back to Shark Tin Electronics. On the workbench today we've got a solar inverter charger that apparently the DC section is smoked. So let's pop it open and see what the damage is. Okay, now this is a Mesa branded Sol I AX5M which is rated at 5 kVA 5000 watts. DC input is 48 volts, AC output 230 volts. AC input is 230, DC output 54 volts, and solar charging mode as well. Now I've seen this one under quite a few different names. Mesa is just one of the brands that they rebranded to. So let's pop it open. Okay, so I've just opened the bottom cover now and I've got a nice whiff of burnt electronics or something burnt. Okay, so if we take a look on the inside here, I've gone on the junction box here, we've got live and neutral AC input, live and neutral AC output. We have got our DC bus here that goes to the batteries and then we've got our solar panel inputs up here, if I remember this right. And then you've got your normal interface board and some fans and as you can see there's quite a bit of a bit of the scale here. So hopefully it didn't get too wet inside. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. I saw that and I don't like the look of it. Yeah. I think we've got a bit of a little bit of burn marks over here and a little bit of burn marks over. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's unplug this. Control panel. <coughs> Toasty. I wonder what happened to this poor thing. It's an interesting construction. Okay. Got some very nice inductors over here. And that just goes up to this little two more block up here. And one for the positive as well. That is strange, it's got no other wires coming out of it, so it's just really an inductor on this wire. Goes into this terminal block, and I presume it goes onto the power transistors on this board. Okay, so this being the solar input, looks like it's sort of arcing across and just eventually works its way up. So I wonder what will happen if we remove the damaged board and see if it starts without solar. What will happen? Let's see. Well, let's try and take it out and see. Yeah. Okay, now that I've pulled this board, this is the underside of the board. Okay, so you can see this at the underside of the board and it's open cocked. Transformer. I think it's just dirt from this top board and the solar that drips off and things like that. Now I've unplugged this um, PV or the solar input. So I'm wondering what's the safest to do, hook up mains? Or hook up a bench supply. I think this thing will draw too much for a bench supply. Maybe just hook up two alarm batteries or something to it. 48 volts, isn't it? So it's a 48 volt, so I'll have to give it three batteries. Let me try my cheap little bench top power supply that's lying down there. Okay, so I've got it hooked up on the DC end to my power supply. I set it to about 48 to 50 volts. 
see what happens. Switch the switch on. Got a beep. And we got some display. Oh, we got some fan spin. No, I've got fan spin, it's all fine. Hey, Lewis. Click so we're oh. I'm actually getting some things on the screen here. It doesn't actually look like it's complaining. It's flashing, which means inverter mode. Input zero. Actually 46.9. Okay, so I'm close to 50 volts. Let me take it up a bit. No, oh, that's the maximum of my passport. I'll get out. Okay. Load zero watts. It says it's giving out 230 volts, 50 hertz. PV is zero watts, obviously, because there's no PV module installed. So no solar panels. Let me check the output. It's a very inefficient way to get 230 volts from going from my lab pass by down to 48 volts up to 230 volts. Yeah, let's go 500 volts, and there we go. Just running off my lab power supply, charging it, or running the charging circuit, 229 volts. Okay, so it looks like we've got a working inverter at least. I'm going to hook up AC input in a few minutes, see if it works with that, and then we can maybe hook it up to a few batteries and test that part of it. Back in a bit. Okay, so now I've hooked up the, the batteries, the four batteries to make 48 volts. Got the lead here. Let's touch it on. I think these batteries are flat anyway. Okay, so let me plug in the power cord that I put onto the inputs. I hope the inputs. Yeah, don't feel like having to go bang. Okay, nothing at all, so it could actually be that the batteries are too flat for the unit to even try bootstrap itself. So I'm going to hook up my lab power supply again. Should I put the polarity? I've actually got the polarity wrong here. That could have been bad. I'm glad it's got some sort of protection. Let's correct that. Okay, swap the polarity now. I'm going to put on shot myself here. Okay, there's life with those batteries on. Okay, so hooking up the batteries and it has started spinning up the fans. Display. So it's 37.2, which means my batteries are a bit flat. Let me hook up the mains. So now once it starts up, it should automatically start charging the batteries. That part of the circuit is fine. Okay, input 243 volts AC. This a bit higher. Oh, we've got some clicking going on here. Okay, so let's go. The symbol shows that mains is coming in, running bypass to the load, and charging the battery. Battery is 36 volts, moving up and down, and the inverter is going output. So basically, I'm just going to leave it running now to charge up the batteries. And then I'm going to put a load on you. Maybe just my soldering iron or something. And see that it is capable of running as an inverter and a charger. And then we'll see if we can get a replacement for the toasted board. And just as a quick follow-up, I did connect it to load of my soldering iron and a desk light. The inverter circuit worked fine, the battery charging circuit worked fine. So I'm just busy on a few suppliers to try source a replacement MPPT board for the solar input. But otherwise this unit's working perfectly fine. One thing the customer might do if we can't get an MPPT charging board is get a separate MPPT charging module that the solar panels can go onto and then that will charge the batteries. 
So that's another option. But at least the main gist of the inverter works fine. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever we upload more videos. Thank you.